Ooh, boy, oh boy, is silver on a tear. Are we looking to break out from this price rut now? I see it's sitting at $24.23. That puts us up 7% on the week. Hey, everybody, I'm the Florida Stacker, and in today's video, we're going to show you five more dollars in face value of 90% constitutional silver. It's week 17 of my Saving in Silver series. Well, let's get started. All right, welcome back, everybody. So today is October 19th, 2021, and there's never been a better time to have physical gold and silver. Now, this series here on Tuesdays is all about 90% constitutional silver, which is your junk silver, your fractional silver. And I like to add around about $5 in face value. That's the denomination of all these coins when you add it up. Adds up to five US dollars. But these particular coins are made of 90% silver, which means that their intrinsic value or the value of the coins due to their silver property is much higher than their face value. And that is a great way. It's a lower cost way than some of you are refined three and four nines fine silver coins and rounds to stack silver. Okay. When you purchase the constitutional junk silver, in many cases, you could save on your premiums, but I do recommend that you work with a local coin shop or in your local community because these online dealers they need to be held accountable for these high premiums on stuff like this, which is which is absurd, you know. But the fact of the matter is, is that people continue to pay it, uh, myself included. So it's likely not to stop. However, because I want to keep stacking, I'm going to be continuing to look for those things that I obviously want to stack and that I feel are going to offer the best value to increase the weight of my silver stack. So let's get on because we've got inflation in the market right now. We've got an uh, uh, unpopular president with an unpopular vaccine mandate uh, that is uh, causing a lot of disruptions in the workplace. We've already got a supply and demand crunch at our ports. There are many reasons, as I mentioned last week, just as the world gets crazy and you think it can't get any crazier, it does. So there are plenty of reasons, in my opinion, to be stacking silver. Plus, we're seeing the dollar kind of come down, right? The dollar's been getting beat down a little bit, which is helping out spot price. And today you know, up over a dollar. So let's go ahead and bring you to the calculator because I want to show you exactly how much process or progress we have made now in our week 17 of the Saving in Silver series. And I did have a spot price of $23.33 as the spot price that has since changed because I put that last night. And we'll update that spot price when we get to the end of the video with our closing calculator. But as you can see going into today, before the market opened, before I woke up this morning, we did have a face value of $144.85. That's down there at the bottom. And at that old spot price does generate a melt value of $2,435.22. And our total weight in Troy ounces is now 104.4898. But we do have more silver, as promised every week. So let's go ahead and get this week's silver out. We'll go ahead and push this silver back, lay it on the table. And let's get started. All right, so right away I can see that we've got another slabbed, not slabbed, but uh, coin here in a coin flip. I don't know why I always say that. And it looks like our friends at Aiden Coins, my friends at Aiden Coins, hopefully yours too, did send us another one of these beautiful 1925 commemorative half dollars. This is the Stone Mountain. This is the second one that we've got. Let's go ahead and grab that first one that they sent, and we'll get a side-by-side -side comparison of these two. So I have been uh, shopping from Aiden Coins. Uh, for the 90% silver coins that you see here, they did come from Aiden. Uh, they do a great job of sending a variety of 90% silver coins, which I appreciate not just because I like to stack weight and hold wealth in silver, but also because I do like the variety of coins that they send. It keeps stacking silver more interesting, especially when you're able to hold history like this. Let's get a nice focus here for you. In your hand, all right, because that's what we're doing here. We're holding history. These particular half dollars were minted in 1925, uh, just like everything else at the time. They did contain 90% silver. Uh, there were around about, I believe, 4 million of these coins that were intended to be produced. Uh, according to uh, my research, roughly 1.3 to 1.5 of these coins exist today. Obviously, most of them are in circulated condition, but uh, thank you. Thank you to Pierre and... Uh, his brother up at Aiden Coins for sending me that nice Stone Mountain half dollar. So that does actually count for 50 cents of this week's 90% silver. Uh, however, we are going to be holding those because they do drive a higher premium. They are a bit uh, more valuable than uh, your standard Walking Liberty half dollars in the same 
uh, quality in most instances, that is, of that time period. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and hold those separate. So let's go ahead and get on with what we've got. And we do have two more half dollars here. We'll start with the Walking Liberty half dollar. All right, this Walking Liberty half dollar from 1935. And these particular half dollars were minted beginning back in 1916. And they did run through 1947 before the introduction of the next half dollar I'm going to show you. And you do see a little D mint mark there in the corner indicating this coin was minted in Denver, Colorado. Go ahead and add that. So after 1947, getting into 1948, the Franklin half dollar did come out. This is a 1958 version. In God we trust. So a little over 60 years old. You can see that famous Philadelphia Liberty Bell. It's hard to see the crack because this particular half dollar is fairly well circulated. This is your standard 90% circulated coins. Actually a little better condition than some of the stuff out there. Uh, but more or less standard and is going to go roundabout for melt value today. We do have a nice looking half dollar here. This could be another BU or pretty close to BU 1964 Kennedy. And it does have a little bit of scuffing there on the face of the Kennedy, of John F. Kennedy himself, that is. It's 1964 half dollar. And 1964 for my new stackers, for those that are new to the series, was the last year of 90% silver in your quarters, dimes, and half dollars. Okay, so this is a 90% silver version. Let's go ahead and drop that one over here. We are working on an individual tube of BU Kennedy half dollars. You can see I've got a Pretty good amount of them going here, not quite a full tube. And as we get more of the better looking Kennedys, it is easier to find BU 1964 Kennedys than it is to find some of the older half dollars, okay? When you're looking for a brilliant uncirculated, basically looks brand new today, 1964 is going to be the best year for that due to the fact that many people were well aware of the time that our government was no longer going to be minting coins currency that is in silver. So they, you know, went to the bank, they uh, exchanged their fiat uh, dollars into these rolls of silver half dollars, silver quarters and silver dimes. And many people held onto them for a long time. As a matter of fact, you could still find rolls that have, you know, not been unwrapped from 1964 uh, without a whole lot of difficulty. If you, if you dig around on eBay or maybe even uh, at some of your coin shops, of course, when they are unopened in those rolls, the intrinsic value of the silver remains the same, okay? No real difference, but the demand for that product uh, could drive a higher premium, aka you could pay a little more for it or get a little more back for it when selling uh, because you are actually, you know, buying and selling a, a virgin roll, right? Something that hasn't seen daylight since uh, it was rolled in that bankroll. So let's go ahead and continue on here. So we'll go ahead and throw that Kennedy over there. It doesn't quite meet uh, my rigorous... Uh, standards for brilliant and circulate to go in that tube, which is not too rigorous. I'm being pretty uh, funny with that statement. So we do have a 1963 Roosevelt here and a 1964. Now the Roosevelt dimes are probably uh, going to be the base or the bulk that along with the Washington quarters of most stackers stacks of 90% silver coins. They tend to be the least popular when it comes to collecting. That is the Roosevelt dimes and the Washington quarters but they're a great lower cost alternative to stacking just the half dollars, which tend to drive a little bit higher premium today. Unless, of course, you're shopping for made in coins when you buy $5 in face, uh, you know, you're paying the same for each. All right, a little editing magic there. But the point of the matter is, is that a lot of coin shops today do charge a little extra cash. That is to purchase the half dollars over the quarters and the dimes. And that is another reason why the quarters and the dimes, namely the Washington and the Roosevelt's, they tend to be the most common that you're going to see. So let's see something a little bit less common, even though still pretty common, and that's going to be your Mercury Dimes. Let's go ahead and grab those Mercury Dimes here. You have a 1929 over, is that a 1920 perhaps? But it, it's hard to say. I do actually think it's a 1920 there on the left, pretty well uh, slicked down, and then a 1929 on the right. And these Mercury Dimes are fan favorites. These particular dimes were minted in the United States from 1916 up until the end of World War II, 1945, okay? So it looks like we've got two uh, Philadelphia Mercury dimes there. And this week's order is a pretty standard order, minus that nice uh, Stone Mountain half dollar. Do you see a lot of Roosevelt dimes and quite a few Washington quarters, which kind of goes back onto what I was just talking about. So we'll speed through that. 
And we'll get to a few other points here on, oh, actually we do have a Mercury down there. Let's go ahead and throw all these rosies in the pile. All right, so my camera did not want to focus on this Mercury dime. It has something to do with the actual um, reflection of the coin, I'm thinking, because I can focus on all the other coins just fine. But for some reason, this one, I have no clue. This 1937 Mercury dime does not want to work with my camera. It's in pretty good condition considering its age. So I did zoom in and have to cut the video and edit in order to show you this particular mercury dime. Let's go ahead and zoom back out. And there you go. So that's a pretty nice looking mercury dime. We didn't get a whole lot of, um, you know, a uh, random assortment of coins other than that Stone Mountain and a couple of mercury dimes. Uh, this week, however, we do have silver and that's important. 1951, 1945, some pretty uh, uh, old, but not too bad Washington quarters. And then last, we do have two more half dollars and both of these are in circulated condition. Looks like, I don't know, it's kind of weird. It looks like some tape or something was over the one to the left in 1963. Franklin half dollar and then of course the 1964. Uh, these probably came from the same roll. It does kind of appear to be that way. I'm not really sure what that residual uh, gunk is on these two silver half dollars. Let's go ahead and bring in the two stone mountains real quick. And then we'll throw up the cal or calculator one last time, show you what we added to the stack this week. There you go, those beautiful 1925 Stone Mountain half dollars with the incredible eagle here on the reverse. Absolutely gorgeous half dollars. Liberty Memorial to the Valor of the Southern or of the Soldier of the South. There you go. Memorial, memorial to the Valor of the Soldier of the South. Great looking half dollars. So let's go ahead and bring up that calculator now. And looking at the calculator to close out week 17, I did update the spot price to $24.23. That brings our face value when we add the $4.50 because I did exclude those Stone Mountain uh, half dollars. Uh, we're up to $149.35. That does give us a melt value with the increase in spot price of $2,608.02 and brings our total weight in troy ounces up to $100 and 7.7445 troy ounces of silver. So there you go, guys. We are going to continue with the 90% silver through the end of the year. And then we will probably switch it up and we'll get into some generic silver rounds. We'll find a particular coin that we want to stack for 2022. And we'll run a series every Tuesday on that particular coin. Maybe we'll do something around the world. Curious to get your input on that, I'm trying to show you some of this beautiful 90% silver that we've managed to stack up here. Now, almost $150 in face. So thank you all for tuning in today. Keep an eye on spot price as spot continues to climb. I do not expect the premiums to come down. Silver is going to get a little bit more expensive again, folks. Uh, not great for those that are still looking to accumulate. Obviously, a good thing for those that are getting closer to retirement or their time of liquidation if they decide to liquidate to, I don't know, fund whatever it is they need to fund, retirement, uh, buying that house that they want, uh, quitting that job that you can't stand, especially in today's world, and doing something for yourself, starting your own business. Plenty of great reasons to stack gold and silver. Build that castle, build that moat, protect your wealth, and we'll see you Thursday with five ounces of silver. Got some real nice silver rounds to show you. Take care, my friends. Keep stacking, and we'll see you then.